Hey guys, today I'm doing another awesome collab with another awesome author, Mari Suggs, and in these videos we are both going to share with you our writing process. For me, I'm in the drafting phase of my debut novel, which will be part of my YA fairy fantasy series. In fact, I'm hoping to have my first official real draft done by the end of this month, so by the time this video is posted on Thursday, I should be just about done. So for my video, I figured I would share some of the things that were most helpful in the planning, brainstorming, plotting, outlining, and drafting process. And then I'll also share some of the things that I wish I did differently so that hopefully you don't have to learn some of those things the hard way like I did. Mari, on the other hand, has already published two fiction books along with a personal development book and her channel is super motivational. So after you watch my video, you should definitely go check her channel out and I will link her writing process video in the description below. Okay, so this is what my writing process looked like with this book and some of the things I learned while plotting and writing this first draft. First, I'll share with you some things I did that I think really helped. I'm not gonna talk much about how I came up with my story idea because it's sort of a long story and I did talk about it pretty extensively in my story idea tag, which I'll link here if you wanna go check that out and find out more about that. But one thing that I did find really helpful after I created my story concept and idea is I tested or pitched that idea to others to see how marketable it was. Quick disclaimer, you definitely don't wanna to share too much about your story with too many people. Remember, your story idea is not copywritten and can be stolen or others can be influenced to write something too similar to your idea. But after I came up with my one to two line pitch that was just basically the general idea of the story, I learned a lot by sharing that idea with others and gathering their reactions to that concept. For me, I shared my pitch in some Twitter chats and also with some people that I know really love or write YA, and their reactions, uh, for the most part, were really encouraging and motivating, and it sort of allowed me to see which parts of my story people got the most excited about. This also meant that I already had a list of people that were excited about my book concept and wanted to stay updated with my progress. Now, if you share and you don't get super encouraging responses, then you also learn something. In this case, you might want to reevaluate your story or what your story is focusing on and keep working on it until you have an idea that people are excited about. Definitely ask for feedback, ask them what they liked, what they thought wasn't as interesting. And what you also might find is some people might let you know that there is already a book or a story that exists that is pretty similar to your idea. Obviously, I did my own research as well well, especially because my book is about fairies, and if you didn't know, there's a lot of story about fairies out there. So I needed to do my research and make sure that my story was unique enough and worth the time I was going to be spending, because when you write a book, you're going to be with that story for a long time. While I was pitching my story, I was also continually brainstorming ideas, characters, and scenes. The most effective way I found to do this on the go was to use my Evernotes app. I loved how easy it was, I could use it fluidly on my phone and my computer, and I could organize my notes into what they call notebooks and stacks. I also did a lot of brainstorming in notebooks and pieces of paper just because writing it physically just helps my brain to get moving in a different way. But then when I got ideas that I really wanted to keep, I would then transfer it to Evernote. I also kept a log of inspiration. So movies or books that definitely inspired my story or when I was in a rut just really encouraged me to get back at it. I also really love Pinterest and making Pinterest boards with all pictures that inspire my world and my characters. Whenever I'm stuck on description or just feel like I'm not visualizing things very well, I definitely definitely go to those boards all the time. And if you're also writing in the fantasy genre like I was, some of these terms really helped me find some really cool pictures. So some of those were fantasy characters, fantasy art, fantasy world, anime characters, fairy art, fairy warrior, etc. I also found researching certain topics that related to my work in progress was really helpful as well. For example, I did a lot of research on fairy lore, which eventually sparked new ideas of how I could reimagine that lore for my own story. Another example is I had created a character that was supposed to be totally blind, and then when I started researching blindness, I started finding out that some people go blind in only one eye and have these different experiences and struggles, and I actually found out that my particular 
particular character might benefit from more of those experiences and it would relate more to his character arc. Finally, I decided to create a story Bible, which is basically a collection of all things that help you write your story and keep your story consistent if you're writing a series. They usually include things like your outline, your research, your character bios, your world details, a glossary of terms, and more. If you haven't already watched it, I did create a whole video where I show you my entire series Bible, how it works, and I even give you downloadable templates so you can easily create your own. But overall, I just found this tool super helpful. Besides simply organizing my ideas, I also used this binder to brainstorm more, to figure out plot holes that I had, to use it as a reference while I was drafting, and also I know it's going to be really helpful as I edit, as I just make sure that all the pieces in my story are consistent and that I get to stay consistent for future books. Finally, I moved to outlining. And honestly, with this, I tried so many different methods, I can't tell you, and I'm still not sure that I found my favorite one yet, but I know that what I started to do at least this round was to just simply start describing the scenes that I already had in my head, and then I began to organize them. To better and more effectively organize those ideas and random scenes into a more cohesive story structure, I ended up reading the book Save the Cat by Blake Snyder and using his story beat method. Now his story beats are more for screenwriters, but they work just as well for novelists. And there's actually a novel version of that book coming out in October, which I can't wait to read. But anyway, I used this story beat method to start outlining for sure. In case you want to know what medium I used to do this, I did try the index card method and Scrivener and many others. But in the end, I found that using a Word document was just more my speed. That being said, I did find that the story beat method from Save the Cat helped me make a really strong first quarter of my book and some part of the end, but once I got in the middle, I did get a bit lost. This caused me to get a little frustrated. So at the time, I was just like, look, I just want to start writing. Maybe if I just start drafting and pantsing it a little bit, things will just fall into place. While pantsing certain smaller sections definitely gave me some new ideas and yeah, you organically find things out as you write. I I just know that I'm a plotter. I'm not a pantser. And so trying to pants the entire middle of the novel just didn't go well. This all happened before I started doing some pretty extensive study into story structure and all the different ways that you can structure a story. But I will talk about that at the end of the video when I share a little bit more about what I wish I did differently. So then there was drafting and I've definitely had my high points and my low points with this stage. Again, I specifically think that my low points were a direct result of of me not being able to figure out the middle part of my outline before I started writing, but here are some things that kept me writing regardless. First, after hearing again and again that I shouldn't be editing while writing the first draft, I took Camp Nano of this past April to try to just write it all the way straight through without looking back at all so I wouldn't be tempted to edit. But in the end, for me, that was proving not helpful. And actually that first draft, if you can even call it a draft, felt very disjointed and I was very discouraged. For Camp NaNoWriMo in June, however, I decided to write a bit differently. Basically, I would write a whole section or chapter and then in my next writing session, I would quickly reread what I had written before. I would make like little notes and adjustments as I read and then that would set me up to know where I was going in my writing for that day. I tried to make sure I wasn't doing any extensive editing, but just rereading and making those small adjustments or notes really helped my draft tie together a lot more. And I think I came out with a much stronger draft because of it. For example, sometimes I'd be writing and I would be like, ah, oh, I didn't foreshadow this, I need to go back. And so briefly I would go back in the manuscript, mark a place where I thought that foreshadowing would fit and then go back to writing and continuing forward. Sometimes these were inline notes, which I'll talk about in a second, but other times I used the comments feature in Word. So if you're at the top of your document, you'll see the review button. And then in that says, new comment. And once you click on that, they'll appear on the side of your document. I also organically realized the gold mind that is placeholders. Basically, if I didn't know what I wanted to call someone or something, or I came to a place that should have a lot more description, but I didn't feel like describing it at the time, or there was this scene that I didn't have quite worked out, or I wasn't in the mood or the zone to write, I would just put sort of like a summary of what should be there in brackets. Sometimes I would highlight it so that I could find it easier later 
later and then I would move on and come back to it at a later date. If you want to read more about placeholders, I did talk about that along with some other tips for finishing your first draft in a recent blog post and I'll link that below if you want to check that out too. Finally, the other thing that really motivated me and helped me finish my draft was to utilize the writing community. For example, me and my friend The Writer's Journey on Instagram were talking about how much we really wanted to finish our drafts and so we decided, hey, let's start a hashtag challenge and we called that hashtag finish that draft and we got a bunch of people excited about it and we've just been posting our progress and this is something that's totally motivated me and helped me stay accountable and like I said I'm about to finish my draft and it's so exciting. I've also been able to meet some pretty incredible critique partners in the writing community and after I've sent a couple of my first few chapters to these critique partners, they have one been super supportive and encouraging and that's been super motivating me to just keep writing and believe in my story and the other thing is that they've been giving me really great ideas or things I should think about for my story and it's just been amazing. If you're not connected with the writing community yet or you've been looking to get more involved, definitely check out my writing community tag which I'll link here so that you can learn more about how to do that. And if you are looking for a critique partner, I am going to be hosting a critique partner finding event in my writer's Facebook group in a couple weeks. So if you've been looking for a CP, definitely request to join that group so you don't miss that event. Okay, now that you know what I did that worked, let's briefly talk about what I wish I did or what I would like to do differently next time. The first thing I wish I did earlier before really starting my draft was to study story structure a little more in depth. Like I said, I really enjoyed Save the Cat. I definitely got a ton out of it, but there's even more story structures out there that give even more detail to different parts of a successful story. After all of my recent research Search, I've actually started constructing my own story structure worksheet which I've been testing on successful movies and stories and after I use this worksheet to revise my story a little bit next month I am planning to put it out to you guys as a free resource so definitely make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss that with this I've also realized how important it is to start your story with the end in mind like an outline your ending can change as you write but if you at least start with a strong idea of an ending, then you're going to be able to use that whole draft to work up purposely to that end. I did have an ending in mind when I first started my draft, but it was a little fuzzy and I didn't love it. And so during the drafting process, I found myself a little directionless and I got paralyzed more than once. So I really wish that I had sort of worked out my ending even further before I started drafting. I think part of my issue is that I had come up with an ending that was more about my overall external plot than it was about my protagonist's character arc and journey. Even more than the external plot, the internal plot of the character is really what should be driving the story. And I think it's because I left some of these things up in the air with my character that led me to have so much trouble. To close, here are a couple of quick pieces of advice that I wish I had known or I had listened to before jumping into my first book. First, don't have too many main characters in your first book. Yes, I do have one main protagonist and it's from her perspective the whole time, but I have four other pretty big main characters that all play off each other as well. For this being my first series book, it has definitely been a lot to take on and sometimes I think maybe I should have done myself a favor by starting off with a little simpler story with one main character to worry about and to write well. In that same vein, I would encourage new authors to try to not start out with a series series. It's enough to figure out and outline one book, let alone like two or three. Originally my book was supposed to be a standalone and then I realized with the storyline it really needed at least two books so that's just where I'm at but early on I could have decided that hey that's a cue to maybe put this aside for a second and try to write something a little simpler. That's not the way I went but again if you're not too knee deep into what you're doing maybe you want to try that first. I also started with my favorite idea which you would think would be the best course of action, but I also really wanna do it justice. Sometimes I feel if I had started with a story idea that was a little simpler, then maybe I could have learned a lot of this hard stuff with that story, and even if I didn't publish it, I would then be able to take all that I had learned and put it into this story, which I'm really, really excited about, and not have such a hard time. Even with all this, I'm definitely totally committed to this book, and I, I don't mean to sound like a downer, I don't regret anything, but I just 
just wanted to share all that if any of you are just getting started out so that maybe your journey can be a little easier than it's been for me. Obviously, this is only my experience in my writing journey so far, but I hope you guys really found it helpful for me to share. And as always, I would love to hear from you in the comments to hear more about your writing process and if you have any tips you'd like to share. As of now, I can't really comment on the rest of the writing process because I haven't gotten to beta readers, revising and editing. But after this draft is done, which should be really soon, then I will be experiencing all of that and definitely will be sharing all I learn on this channel. So if you would like to see those videos when I make them, definitely hit that subscribe button and that bell so that you get notified and don't miss anything. In the meantime, don't forget to check out Mari's video, which I'm sure talks about more of those parts of the process as well. If you enjoyed this video or my content in general, you can support my channel by hitting that like button and it also lets me know that you'd like to see more videos like this one. I'm gonna sign off for now because I have a lot of writing to do, but I will definitely see you guys next Thursday and until then, happy writing.